Hello, I'm Brian Hibbs, and welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel Month Club for the month of January 20, or sorry, December 20, 2019. It's the last, uh, it's the last month of the, decade. of the decade. That's crazy. Wow. This is, we're about to go to 2020. You guys, we have, we have some, some youngers here, and you guys don't understand how weird it is to be in 2020. It's genuinely weird to, about to be 2020. Weird. Anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, our book this month is the <laughs> the fantastic Little Bird uh, by um, by Ian Van Polkice. East East. Well, no. Oh my God, Darcy. Darcy. We could. Uh, I've already. We could the start whole calling ourselves. Yes, we we could. I'm sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, Darcy Van Polk East. Yes, sir. And Ian Bertram. Ian's been here before. This is Darcy's first time. Um, and it's weird for you to be here a second. Not it's weird to, for you to be here a second time. It's cool that you're here a second time, but I don't I don't know quite how to do the interview because you know it's That's all fine. it's all the I, I don't want to ask you the same questions I asked last time. I don't remember the questions. Oh, good. All right. Well, very good. Nobody remembers the answers either. I don't know. Um, this book is really good, and you guys all in the audience really thought this was really good too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I like to hear. Um, yeah. There. Uh, Wow. Mm, yeah. Wow. So, the first question is, 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 is why, why comics? Why, why? Because you're a, you're a filmmaker in your real life. Is real life? Is that the way you're going to I think this is my real life. Okay. Now. But, um, but yeah, my, my, um, uh, I am a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Yes. And my, uh, my history is in making films. Yeah. Uh, why comics? Um, why films? I don't know. I, um, I, 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 I fell in love with comics first. Okay. When I was young, I'm dyslexic, which is um, always a challenge if you're a writer, um, or not even. But um, so I learned to read reading comics, mm -hmm. um, and then um, there's some some things I think I, I think a lot of uh, um, People have this experience where, like, something happens in their life, um, especially in your younger years, that like an outside force mm. sort of comes in and draws you closer to the things you love, or and they become like a part of you in a way sure. that like is beyond just something that's interesting to you. And that happened with comics for me, you know, um, and you know it was like. Justice League and um, uh, like Justice League International mm -hmm. and and uh, Grant uh, Morrison's Animal Man and all okay. those things would sort of they happened at a really so you're an 80s kid yeah they they happened at like late 80s mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of early 90s I guess they they got like burned into me in a way that it just became like a part of my DNA yeah, yeah, yeah. and so but I didn't know how comics were made you know like were you reading those comics as a kid or yeah as a kid yeah, okay yeah yeah. Like, um, like their age kid? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, well, maybe a year older. But uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and uh, I'm very visual, so it was very, that was how I, um, that's how I, I gravitated towards, what was it? Oh, anyway, and then why I didn't comics? know, uh, yeah, why why comics? Comics? yeah, that's why comics. It's my favorite I question, actually. It's, yeah, it's yeah. the greatest question. I'm sorry I'm giving you yeah. the longest no, 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 answer. No, give me the long story. No, I like uh, that. And, long. But anyway, then, you know, I, I just, so I'm just, um, uh, I, I, anything visual, comics, film, mm -hmm. you know. Um, it was easier for me to understand how films were made than comics. Um, really? Yeah, because, like, you, there was no, like, you know, behind the scene. You didn't see on TV, like, how comics were made, you know. Sure. Whereas, and so I could see how films were made, and I could under, I could, I didn't know anyone who made films. But or even, 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 like, little yeah. films take 20 people to make them. Oh no, it's it's right? incredibly I mean, complicated. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but but I could I could envision the path. Yeah. You know, whereas comics, it was just kind of like they're just like these magical things that appear. Huh, okay. You know, they were just like, it was like magic. You know. Okay. And um, so then I you know but then I grew up and I was like, oh, I can make comics. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. And where were you? So you obviously must have gone into a comic shop to be buying Animal Man and. Oh, and things like I that, mean, right? Because yeah. those those weren't on the newsstand, as I no, recall. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I lived in comic shop shops okay. as a kid. That's, yeah. that's how I spent all my time. How, how close were you to one? 
Um, well, I I was a bus ride away from okay. several. We okay. had to, uh, yeah, I had to go to the go to the other side of town or cut, cross a couple of bridges. Right, right, yeah, right. There was this place called the Blanket Store, which um, wasn't called the Blanket Store, but it's what what I called it. What my okay. NA when I knew because it had a dirty, filthy quilt that hung in the window. Okay. Like it, they didn't have curtains. It was just like, and it was just a warehouse of like thousands of long boxes. Wow. You know, like the it, and uh, the guy was like, ex he, he was horrible. He was like excruciatingly painful. He hated kids. I think. <laughs> Fucking hated oh, kids. But anyways, I would. That's where I would go on the weekend, and yeah. I would just dig for things. So, yeah. yeah. In Canada. In, yeah. in Canada, yeah. yeah, we had comics in Canada. No, 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 I know that there are comics in Canada. No, I was just like, I'm trying to picture this warehouse in Canada. Yeah. Like, I'm just trying to picture that. Yeah, it was, it was in yeah. New Westminster, not that anyone's going to know okay. where that is, but okay. it was, it was, yeah, there you go. So it's, it's like, you know, all the, all the good stuff was there, right? Uh -huh. The drugs, the comics, the prostitutes, yeah. it was all there. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. interesting, interesting. I was too young to appreciate some of those other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why comics? Um, this is probably one you asked me. No, no. It, in fact, it was because it's always the first question, always. And and we're gonna someone someone is gonna play them back and like go. Oh, I hope I contradict myself. <laughs> I hope you do too. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, that's a really difficult question to answer. I mean, similar. I spent a lot of time in comic shops when I was a kid. Um, I I mean, they were like just the best escape. Mm. Things made sense through, you know, through through the worlds that they that they built, and then um, <laughs> yeah, I just loved I just loved telling stories. Yeah, through them, and and uh, I wrote a little bit when I was younger, and just never had the same resonance. So, did you did you do like little mini comics when you were a kid? Uh, I started doing like actual like mini comics. Fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Yeah. There was this one. Uh, fuck. What was it called? Um, Contagion. Okay. And it was this guy who it's kind of like Unbreakable, like a almost straight ripoff. Now that I'm thinking about it. Mm -hmm. It was this guy who uh, basically, uh, don't rip off, but he uh, realized he was, I mean, essentially unbreakable. But it was more about the transition from him getting hurt for the first time like and uh, and spending uh, a lot of time in, in in the hospital and getting irradiated and it was a lot of like weird like like horror in a hospital okay um, and a lot of uh, I'm thinking about it there wasn't there, the story was awful like there was okay. nothing really to it but it was a lot of like <laughs> you're 14 don't don't beat yeah. yourself down yeah. Yeah. be like sorry it's like there's two children and I don't want to be a little too uh, <laughs> yeah, they signed off on the waiver. It's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like if we explode into tentacles, you'll be fine, right? It's okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, a guy like tearing his own skin off and like right. very. And I think I just enjoyed drawing that stuff, mm -hmm. and then found a story to kind of fit fit what I wanted to draw. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. roundabout. But... Formal training. Yeah, I went to SVA okay. for cartooning, Yep, actually. Um, it was great. I had Klaus Janssen as a professor. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and uh, Phil Jimenez, who's also just awesome. Uh, Nick Bertozzi was great. And, um, yeah. Those are all three <laughs> very different artists with three very different styles. And they were all great, yeah. really great teachers. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like surprisingly patient. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm great. You have a very distinct style. Thanks. And, well, I don't know that it's a thanks. I mean, I think that's just it's you know it's it's a very distinct style. That's that's you. That I if I saw a drawing, I would know that it was your drawing. I think. It it was was your style supported by SVA like to grow your style or. So actually, when I when I the portfolio that I submitted was um, uh, so much more influenced by uh, Frank Miller and Eduardo Rizzo, mm. so it was like a lot of like, like 
high contrast mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, stuff. Thick blacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just an excuse to not draw <clears throat> environments. Yeah. Because it's like just a great way. You, yeah. know, you shine a light. Yeah. And then there's light on one wall. Right. And some cast shadows. You never actually have to deal with perspective ever. And then I found uh, Mobius the first year of um, college. I forget who introduced me to him. Um, but just became a devo devotee. Yeah. Uh, and now, I mean, I haven't, we talked about this, but I haven't really looked at any, any other comics. I've been trying to avoid any, like, subconscious influences hmm. from other artists and hmm. trying to figure out exactly what I'm going for. But through, through my own, uh, like Jungian approach to, okay. to like what what lies beneath and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I would I would have a hard time seeing someone deflecting you though at this point. Deflecting? Yeah, like if like if you saw someone's art and went that guy's really good, I, I can't oh, see no, it no, I mean, I mean, changing like, or moving you from where your particular style is. I, I mean more like I'll like okay, so here's a great example: Trad Trad Moore. Mm -hmm. His work is incredible. He yeah. just did uh, Silver Surfer Black. Yep. And I think it's like yep. it's like when Mobius did Airtight Garage. Yep. Like yep. it's next level work. Right? Yep. And uh, I got to see his pages, and they were really inspiring. But he's also doing a completely different type of work. Right. So that is great because sure. it's like I love um, I love being like like looking at someone's work. And yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, in, in the best, you know, in the best way. Yeah. He has uh, a lot of the same fine line that you do, mm -hmm. and, and a lot and of the super rendering yeah. obsessive. Yeah. But it's yeah. also his is very open and very big, and yours is very not narrow. That's the wrong no, way to no, put no. it, but very tight. like tight. Yeah, yeah, very tight. That's a good word. Yeah. yeah. And he also loves dealing with like big um, distorted shapes, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but just em you know, sort of like more empty space, like you said. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, but uh, his stuff is great to look at. Yeah. Uh, I think if I looked at, uh, who's a good example? Um, maybe James Heron. Right. Like his work is also incredible. Mm -hmm. And I could see that stuff slipping into my work subconsciously. Right. And I, I don't want to do that, if that makes sense. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I mean, I like the yeah. parody of it. Thanks. I don't know that it makes sense, but I like the period. Of it. <laughs> uh, do you have? Well, tell me your training. Like, did you go to school to? to, uh, to, to yeah, I, I went to film school. I took okay. uh, screenwriting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, once I realized that screenwriters had to give their scripts to someone else, I um, started. Uh, I, I took some directing right. stuff, and um, and then that was basically. Uh, my career up until a couple of years ago was directing uh, full time, mm -hmm. um, mostly advertising um, and some films and yeah. It, tell me about directing <clears throat> advertising because I don't think I've ever had an opportunity to interview sure. someone who does that. Yeah, it, it's probably the least interesting thing to interview, but I yeah, I, I, I just yeah. sort of wonder: <laughs> um, is there any creative? It is. It, it, it's that? actually in in um, the thing with commercials or advertising is that you generally have healthy budgets right. as opposed to making independent films which I've also done um, there's no story to be had yeah or if there is they're in the smallest moments possible right right so it's like the story is she bites the cereal and she loves it mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. I never saw that coming that's a mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um but it it forces you to sort of like analyze those okay. mo those small beats mm -hmm. that we take for granted in storytelling in like a new way and it's really about aesthetic what what i what I, I always say like the the blessing and the curse of of doing advertising work is that it became is that it became um a, a you know aesthetically obsessed to the okay. point where like so, my, the the film work that, I, like, I looking back at it now, it feels a little stagnant because it's really just, like, beautiful, but, like, it's not maybe flowing the way I wanted it to. Right. Anyways, um, 
so yeah, it, it's just really about making things look great, mm -hmm. um, which I like, but it was always about the story and writing mm -hmm. for me, and so um, doing Little Bird, which I was doing while I was directing advertising, writing it was like my release. It's like mm -hmm. I would do like a 14 hour day on set and then I would go back to my office and I would write a scene, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I could describe things the way that I see them visually, mm -hmm. but then I got to pass them off to Ian who mm -hmm. would like, you know, take that and either make it better or change it, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's yeah. back three steps up. Where did the idea for Little Bird come from? What was your motivation when you, when you face the blank page? I'm assuming that, and maybe I'm assuming incorrectly, that you started gestating the story before you had mm -hmm. spoken to Ian? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, you have a blank void. Where does it come from? Um, that's such a hard question. Of course it is. Yeah, thank you. That's why, that's why I asked it. Um, it. It's really just, uh, you know, for me, I, I know how this sounds. It's like, I feel like the story exists, and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to access it. I, sure. I know that's like, that's no, been said I, before. It, it, I actually but it's true, truly know? believe that. And, yeah. and, and it's, it's obviously, it's, it exists because it forms out of all these experiences in your life that you are either aware of or not aware of. Sure. Um, and you're just trying to, like, you know, get there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, yeah, I mean... I, I don't so what know. was the first piece of it that you had? Do you remember? Was it... Was it an image of Little Bird herself? Was it something well, what about I knew, the what, world? Yeah, what I knew um, to start, and, and, and you can pick up, jump in or whatever, but like what I knew to start is that there was this uh, a young girl in a... Resi I, before advertising, I'd done documentary work, and I'd worked with um, a lot of the First Nations peoples in Canada and sat across from them for hundreds of hours hearing about the damage of residential schools and all these other things, it changed me as a person. It okay. changed the way I saw the world. It, you know, was traumatizing. It, it, it you know, manifested in all these ways. Um, and so I wanted to project into the future that, like, what if things don't get better? What if they only get worse, you know? Right. And Obama was the president, so it wasn't like it was like there was this evil thing. But I was like, but the pendulum swings, you know, okay. and it's like, how angry is America going to be mm -hmm. that there's the first black president? Let me just ask this question. I'm sorry, this is a complete sidebar. I'm, it's but okay, as, I'm sidebarring all but, over the place. But as, but as a Canadian, are you yeah. thinking about your life and your future in terms of the American president? I mean, I... Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, naive not to, maybe. Okay. I mean, it's not um, a facetious question. I, I mean, no, no, American, uh, I, you know, it, it, I don't think of things that, I, it's odd, I don't think of my future. Well, America. I mean, it's like, you know, way. America's America, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a really yeah, powerful yeah. country, yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're right next to it. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we definitely have our own things. You burnt down the White House, though. I mean, you kicked our ass in war. We, we, we did burn that yeah. mother... Yeah, we burned that mother down. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, I mean, if we, you know... I wouldn't worry about it. Oops, something... Um, but anyways, I was... I w you know, these were all congesting and mm. sort of... Um, but the one... Th just in terms of... That sort of, like, informed maybe the world or the greater story, but really, like, the story piece I knew was that there was going to... That, you know, there's this young girl and that you know her mother leads this resistance and their and their grandfather is locked away in this prison and he becomes the great white hope to 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 end the war okay but but not mm -hmm. you know or at least that's like that's the that's the thing that can't work mm -hmm. right that's the story is that like okay. the great white hope actually you know will not show up for you. Okay. So what's next? Okay. You know? um, so that was sort of, right, that was sort of like the first conversations probably I had with you were about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and at this point, did you know anything about the shape of it or what it was? Like, what were you thinking maybe, oh, this could be a movie? Or, or um, were you like, no, this is comics? Yeah, no, I was pretty sure it was comics. It was comics. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. for like a short time I entertained the idea 
because I've been making short films yep. and they'd been touring festivals and they'd won some awards and mm -hmm. there was like some momentum there. So I kind of tried to squeeze it in. It's like, oh, well, maybe it's a short film. And right. I had a meeting with my producer and like just told him the basic and he's like, you're out of your fucking mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, that, that takes a lot of, way more money, you know, especially Canada. It's, it's like, there's no money to make, make films, but. Right. And then it, then it just sort of dawned on me. It's like, this is, yeah, this is the, this is the comic I've always wanted to make. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys know each other at this point? No, no. no. Uh, he How reached out to me. DeviantArt. Okay. I, I yeah. had DeviantArt. He reached out to me and okay. started talking. Just and, out uh, of the blue? Out of the blue. Yep. It was okay. a total cold call. Yeah, like six years ago. Yeah. Okay. The story was awesome, and the idea of the collaboration was very cool because he was so open to... Um, just whatever, not whatever I wanted to do, but like, you know, like, like really, um, like wanted it to be like a true collaboration, you know, mm -hmm. like if I was like, oh, you know, I'd love if we did this, it's like, oh, that's great, but what if we did this, you know, just had the, had the right, um, kind of felt like a, like a band, you know, yep. like, jamming. Yeah. Were you, were you just out of SVA at that point? Where, where, where were yeah. you in your life? Yeah, it was a really dark time. Yeah, no, I was just at a SVA. I just came back from Florida. I was there in Gainesville for six months. It was an awful place. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's fire. It's bad. It's really bad. Hmm. I mean, I it was. There was a great guy down there named Tom Hart, who's also a cartoonist, Tom and he has a school down there. Yeah. And he was, amazing, and I got to use their school essentially as a studio. So he was amazing. That was great. Um, but yeah, just trying to. I don't know. Just lost. I'm trying to figure. <clears throat> out what I was going to do in the world. What, was there uh, anything out of SVA, um, uh, like job placement or anything like that? Or I mean, I, I, was, I was lucky because uh, last year of SVA, I got a job doing uh, Bowery Boys. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was my, my income. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons I moved to Florida because it was so cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I could, you know, do, uh, do that. But that, uh, it, was, it was, I think it was... It was really difficult on a lot of a lot of people. I mean, it was it was it was great, but they didn't really have a lot of specific job placement. But it's also it's comics. It's like you don't need to go to school to do it. And sure. what I mean, what, how are you gonna? There's not like a direct uh, road to sure. getting getting your work out there. Sure. Anyway. Yeah, so, I mean, one yeah. of the things I always worry about, and you know, I've I've mentioned this from time to time during these shows, is is that we're we have at least three different schools graduating <laughs> 10 students a year at least who may or may not have any kind of a potential for a job at, at the end of that, right? It's yeah. not, there's not a clear path as to what you do. And a lot of the things uh, <clears throat> that we ask these young students to do are, you went directly into a graphic novel, which it, it seems like a huge amount of work. Um, <laughs> Without necessarily a clear payoff, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, I think also uh, I just I did not want to work a day job mm -hmm. at all, like very, very vehemently. Mm -hmm. I'd worked at Market Basket when I was in high school, which is like a right. like little grocery train. Right. And I just remember fucking, you know, just, just uh, <laughs> like s small tyrants, you know, yeah, yeah. like just, sure, just sure. the worst. And I sure, was just sure. like, absolutely not. So, I'm, I'm um, probably one of them. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's good to me. No, that's cool. Uh, um, uh, I wonder, do you, so are you, and I, do, do like, do like Marvel and DC send people out to scout the schools or anything uh, like that? I'm just, no, I'm no. just trying to they're, picture what this is. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're good. Mm -hmm. Like they, uh, they don't want anything to do with you unless it's like a young editor who, who is like trying to bring people in, or, right. or someone who is really like, um, like Joey Cavalieri mm -hmm. uh, was amazing, mm -hmm. and he liked the idea of taking chances on people. Yeah. Um, who else? Katie Kubert mm -hmm. was great, um, but uh, no, they're they're good. They have, I mean, there's, I mean, there's so many comic books, so many sure. people for them to choose to, from, and sure. it's a corporate structure, so they want sure. to be able to put out books that actually make them money and the idea of taking chances is always... Yeah, they're in the risk manage management business. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, for sure. 
how I am as a retailer. Yeah. I mean, honestly. Well, for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. I'm trying to decide between yeah. product A and product B and how yeah. many I should bring in. It's risk management. It all is. Totally. <clears throat> The funny thing, though, is the most exciting stuff that happens in comics is is where when you throw off the doors to risks, and, right. and you, you know. It, what about it, the first time? Like, what about when you saw the previews for Little Bird? Were you? Oh yeah, no, no. The, I mean, the, just I think this was the image. I think. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Right. And this is the cover to number one, more or less, right? And and I, I saw that, and I was like, whatever that is, I want it. I oh, don't, cool. you know. There you go. Fuck yeah, this this works. That there's something about this. Right. Didn't know anything about you. Had no idea who you were, yeah, you know. No, no but idea. and yet we're like, let's let's take advantage. Now we had the advantage that it was a returnable book from Image, right? Yeah. Image made that a returnable book. And I think that uh, maybe Little Bird launched that program. I believe that's correct. Yes, yeah. and and it was Excuse the me. kind of book that I'm like, yes, let's take a chance on this. Let's order. I think we ordered 80, 90 copies, way more than we yeah. order normally. And we sold pretty much every copy, yeah, uh, because the book was good. And and our staff, you know, I mean, Nathan was telling you earlier, yeah, you know, he was hand selling it to every single person, right? Yeah. Like that. That's that's what you, that's the connection well, that it, the direct the, market store makes, right? Is that hand selling, that moving it directly into someone's brain. Eric you know? Stevenson, the uh, publisher mm -hmm. at Image, he's such a smart guy. Yep. He he's yep. he's just <laughs> the guy is. Uh, he, there's just a recent interview with he, once a year. He kind of does a state of the Mm -hmm. industry interview and yep. it's always just like yeah, it was great. you learn so much from that yep. but he because um, when we initially uh, pitched it to image I was so I had uh, staked so much on this yeah. in a sense that um, I was worried yeah. you know and I and I you know because a lot of times you'll send in like seven pages that's like kind of a standard pitch six seven yeah. maybe eight pages and I was like, we're doing the whole issue, and I'm, <laughs> because I just knew that's like, it, I if he had enough of the story, he wouldn't be able to turn a story sure, kind of thing. Sure. And um, and it worked. So and, and, so and let's he, let's talk about how you yeah. got to that point because sure, like writing that pitch is not an easy thing, and you're dealing with a guy on, on, on Deviant Art that you guys don't know each other yet. I mean, it's emails, right? But. Yeah. We actually yeah. met for the first time at New York Comic Con. Like this year, we yeah. just really? met. Wow. Well, actually, two months ago, we just met for the first wow, time. Wow, that's <laughs> super cool. That's I don't, super cool. I don't leave home very often. Sure, sure, sure. And um, it's strange. It's yeah, cool. super weird. Yeah, very weird. Yeah. yeah. So how did still you, kind of weird? How did you get no. to that point? You you had you had this a kernel of an idea. Yeah. You saw his work and it attracted you. You thought, yeah. I mean, I was looking through Deviant Art, and when as soon as I saw Ian's, actually, it was uh, um, Ed Brisson mm -hmm. who said, you know, you should look at this guy's work, and he showed me Ian's. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah. and he's a writer at Marvel now. Mm -hmm. He does. He's doing mm -hmm. X books, mm -hmm. and um, and I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, yes, mm -hmm. that's the one. And, okay. Uh, yeah. And then that, that was it. And so, yeah. what did you pitch to him? What was the thing that you pitched to him? I sent you probably what the first fifteen pages, sixteen pages of the of what became the first chapter of Little Bird, right? Yeah. 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 The script. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I told you the story over the phone, and then you're like, I, you were like hesitant, as I w or cautious, I should say. Yeah. From some random dude from Canada just calling you up and saying, <laughs> as I would be. So you're like, yeah, maybe you could send me a script or something. I was like, yeah. And then, and, and you liked it. Had you but, written um, the script at that point, or did you write it in response to him going, send me a script? Oh, no, I, I'd written it. You had written it, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you had written it without any idea who might be illustrating it. Yeah. 15, 15 pages, half, half the first issue, basically. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then I rewrote it. Once Ian was yeah, on board, sure, I rewrote sure, it. Yeah, sure, sure, obviously, yeah. I mean, probably a hundred times, but yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. very much, I... <coughs> I, I write for Ian, mm -hmm. um, and def, like more so as Little Bird went on. Now we're doing our next book, Precious Metal. Yeah, and now I really feel like I understand, like well, as much as anyone can understand. But like, um, you know, you learn a lot, right? Sure, like, of course. I, I, I be, because if Ian doesn't this thing is if I if I send Ian a script, I, like I, I and he'll. Like, you know, I'll, I'll send the scripts. It's they're long, 
and um, Ian will like do like scene th sit one through eight, and then not nine, and then eight through twelve or whatever. Hmm. And is and I see the pages coming in, and I'm like, he hates scene eight. <laughs> he hates scene eight. It was funny. I didn't even realize because that. and then the letter. But it's totally true. Or did you point it out, or the letter? No, I pointed it yeah, out. Okay. I, I think no, I was just explaining it to Addy. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny. It's and then I'll call him up, and I'll be like, what's up with? this scene and he's like what nothing i'm like come on man you you're not why aren't you drawing <laughs> oh well it is you know i did find it a little you know <laughs> and then you know i'll think about it some more and i'll go yeah you know like it's 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 not right yeah you know so um so the first yeah. script you gave him was it in screenplay format it was as, as opposed to specifically to comics it was yeah we yeah. jumped around back and forth on little bird a lot yeah. you know um, it was, it was, I think I, first I, I broke it into panels mm -hmm. and you were like, I'd kind of prefer if it was more of a traditional film script and I could make the decisions of yeah. how it would break down. But then, uh, issue two through five, you did. I did, breakdowns. I did all breakdowns. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The first one, the, the first chapter was a, us learning how to work together. Yeah, of course. So, cause, uh, you know, so then I stopped doing panel breakdowns, but then it didn't, it wasn't com I mean, it was amazing, but it wasn't coming back in like necessarily the sequence that the way I saw. So, mm -hmm. so now the way we kind of ended with, with like two through five and certainly the next book is like, I do full breakdowns so that it's very clear how I see it. And then if Ian wants to change something, you know, we talk about it and usually we do, you know, he, he's, he, um, you know, he, he, he knows if something isn't, it's I'm writing it for him yeah so it's like he can't draw it unless it's the way he needs it to be yeah. so that's you know, so the sense. so the <clears throat> the screenplay is typically a page per minute right yeah. uh, on so if you've got a 12 minute film it's a 12 page script yeah more or less right yeah, yeah. comics don't have that rhythm in any way shape or form right uh no they don't and and so the unit that you're looking at is the page yeah was that a hard transition for you to make to go from one way of thinking about a page to a different way and then the follow-up question to that would be in how much of an influence was ian in that process yeah, well, how much of an influence was that? I mean, huge. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't that hard. Okay. I, I mean, um, and it's more just my directing and editorial experiences mm -hmm. that, like, I see things in shots. Sure. And so... But a comic, I, a comic has... A unit yeah. of a page can have so much information on it. Right. Right? And you're, you're actually... I mean, one of the things I really admire about this book is how dense some of the pages are. Yeah. That there's a, there's a really good density to hear. It, yeah. An issue takes... You know, a chapter takes a, a significant amount of time to read, not yeah. like a lot of the contemporary comics that are there. Right. So, the... No, that, the was, that was old Darcy. I mean, I, we had a okay. few conversations about this. I mean, specifically about the density. Yeah. Because I always tend to want to pace things a little long, you know, a little more room in between things. Yeah. And, I mean, we had a bunch of conversations about, like, trusting the reader. Yeah. You know, and I was saying, I think we need to walk people through it a little bit. Yeah, more. I, I, my, my tendency is to, like, cram story in. Kids are um, <laughs> Are you asleep? <laughs> That's a little boring. I, 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 I want to cram. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing yeah. to get yeah. as much story in there as I can. Yeah. Not because I want it to be like dense and confusing, sure. but sure. But that's yeah. but again, that's literally not how movies work, right? Because movies right. unfold at the speed that the of the, the t frames per second that you can't change that and you can't yeah. change the way. Right, the, but for the, me, like as it, when I'm when I'm editing, when yeah. I was directing and editing, because yeah. every time I directed, normally I would edit my own stuff. So like you could think about it in terms of length, yeah. but I would always think of it in terms of shots, mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. length. So it's sure. like this scene is seven shots. Right. It doesn't matter if it's 20 minutes long or f one minute long. Right. Those are the frames right. we need to tell the story. Right. But those seven so, shots have to exist in space in a comic. 
right? There's right. A, there's a boundary of the page, and I, I guess I'm just wondering if that. Well, changed. no, and I, 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 but I really think that that's the weeds. I'm so sorry. No, I that's just, okay. I'm fascinated about this kind of a thing. No, but this is a recent. Process, that, you know? This goes back to your recent conversation that Ian and I had, where in like, so the panels. Um, to me, well, panels and panel size determine yeah. term pacing. Sure. I'm more focused on, well, I guess both. Oh, I don't know. But anyways, it's like Ian has flex. It, like I'll write something in nine panels yeah. because I feel like that's the flow that it needs. Sure. But then Ian has the flexibility to do those nine panels over two or three pages. Sure, sure. Right? I may write it as two, and he's like, no. Like, okay. you, we need, okay. you know. And so that's where the conversation, like more recently, that's where the conversation's been happening, it's right? Been great too, yeah. Because yeah. he's been writing. We we talked about it, but it's it's like the the way he writes is like really, really, really dense, and it's got a lot of information mm -hmm. in it, which is great. And then uh, every every once in a while, I want to open up the scenes like he's talking about, yeah. And uh, and then sometimes we do, and it yeah, works. Yeah. 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 Generally, if, if, if Ian wants to change it, I, okay. it's just like, go for it. Because, okay. yeah. Um, but yeah. I don't okay. know. Is that kind of what you were talking no, about? No, it is. I, and okay. I, and we'll, I, I want to I, I I get back to the weeds, but I really want to. Let's, let's open it yes. up just a little bit here. Cause, especially because the girls are so tired. And I can <laughs> see that. <laughs> so, so do, you, do you lovely sweeties in the first row have any questions? I know oh. you do. Um, few pages. Uh, I will answer anything. That you... Um, little bird hides out in this hole. Yeah. And you want to copy just to make it easier. When you guys show sort of like an X-ray of the hole, I don't really see any food. Mm. So I'm, that's a good point. And then three days later, I'm not sure how she served. That's a great my point. Food. She's oh gonna be an editor. I'll let you take that one. <laughs> that is a really good point. She might have died in there. <laughs> She yeah. basically, do you mind if I repeat it? Your question? Yeah. So basically, a little bird hides out in this like little bunker, and she's saying, There's no food and water. It says three days later. I mean, it's a really good point. There are a few cans, but I'm pretty sure the, they're just full of weapons like everything else. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, uh, Thank yeah. You. I'm gonna Good call. You know, I'm gonna think about that because I mean she has stuff, and so I think we made an assumption that that like she's got some uh, sustenance in there, but um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, it might maybe I'm stretching it, aren't I? Uh, but can uh, someone survive for three days with no food? No water though. Where's the water? They would be starving. I drew it. Where's, so, <laughs> where's the water? So Thank you. If they Even did no survive, Little Bird would, oh, would probably try to find the first food source she could instead Darcy. of going off to fight. That's a great point. So I, the question I'd ask you, Hammy, is when she comes out of the Do bunker. I just send this microphone to you if I want. No, no, no. I just, I just want to say this yeah, though. When she comes out of the here. bunker, she, she, she doesn't look like she's robust and like she's been eating and healthy, right? She's kind of creeping out and she's like looking for what's going on and she's. It's also trying to scary. see the deal, right? Yeah. So. But I think that in the real world, if you're to go into a hole for three days, you're smart to think that you should be bringing some food. True. Yeah. There is food in there. You, you there see food in there? There's a few cans. Yeah. So there might have, she might have eaten something. I, I don't even know. Me. Well, she also can't be killed. True. So, yeah. Well, she doesn't know that yet, though. She hasn't discovered that. Yeah. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just following along the plot, man. That's a huge plot hole. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> we will. This is why I should hire you as an editor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other no. specific things? No. No? That was it? That was your only question of the whole book? <laughs> I think I had another one, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, think That's about fine. it. We can come back. Right. I mean, it's like 160 pages and your only questions in the first 10? Right. But it's a really good question. It is a good question. question. Seth, go ahead. So, I'm with the kid on this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I'm sorry, but here's where I'm going with this. 
in so many stories where where we see all kinds of, of plots and, also, and things happening. Question. One second. Oh, go ahead, Amy. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, there's one bit where the helmet's there and like where? the oh. helmet. It's around. Here, let me just take that. It's the one where he puts on a giant red helmet. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. The, that one. This yeah. one. This one. Okay. Why do they have a screen in there? Because otherwise they wouldn't be able to fight. Well, I'm thinking that it kind of pops on. Sometimes, like the screen, like if he needs to tell them something, the screen will pop on, right? Cool. But they actually make screens like that that you can see through cool. until something comes up on them. And also, so. it makes itself against a rock, it looks like. So how is it still working? Uh, Where? He bangs uh, it against a rock. Well, he falls. Oh, and I it see. And it could have banged up against a rock. That's so. why it's cracked. <clears throat> see? It cracks in the glass. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Seth, you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for drawing those cracks in there because they were definitely not in the script. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so. Thank you. The question of, of how do you choose what mundanities of of human life to include? Eating. Exciting, but just in thinking of of stories similar to this, so rarely do we see people doing people things. So, yeah, I mean, one of the best ways to establish if someone is maybe not sympathetic necessarily, but to give them more humanity is to make them eat something. Sure. I mean, immediately you're like, oh, yeah, I eat. This person eats. I mean, it's a, it's a great storytelling technique. I mean, we do it with Sarge where he drinks out of the bottle. Right. Right. Um, but you're right, it's pretty, pretty boring. Um, I mean... Do we do that in anything precious metal like that? Yeah, uh, oh yeah, like, uh, um, yeah, oh yeah, lots actually. Yeah. Okay. But um, I think we've got like three, like, coffee scenes in the first. Oh, just that's in right. the Yeah, and they drink but, tea in the... Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, I, I think it is important. Yeah. Um, it, it's um, to do stuff like that when you can. Um, something like Little Bird is like, it's such a rapid um, pace to the story that... Uh, it makes it more of a challenge to work work those things in, um, but you know you do it where you can, and um, as long as everything, like you know, every page has to move the story ahead. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you know they can still just be having a cup of coffee, and you can still be moving the story ahead. But sure. um, as long as that, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is more kind of directed to Ian, but like, so did you draw this by hand, or is it digital, and if you did do it by hand, like, what was your process, and what utensils did you use? Uh, yeah, it was all by hand, and uh, so for the first issue, and then some of issue two, <coughs> I would just... Uh, draw the page in pencil, and then ink it with Micron, and then for three through five, I would do, because I wanted to get way more detailed with it, I would just add, um, I would do like a page of pencils, and then a light box, and then Micron on top of that. I hope that's helpful. Yeah? yeah. What, what size of, yeah, what size um, of pages were you working on? Uh, these were 12 by 18. But what? the next one, Precious Metal, is ridiculous. I mean, it's 18 by 24. Interesting. Yeah. Why Why the change? I wanted to include more detail. Okay. Uh, I also... I just I like how they feel, you know? Yeah. They're just, like, big. You know, it's there's, just, a, <laughs> there's a heavy level of density in these pages. And I think this is part of what Seth was trying to ask, too, is, is, the, <laughs> is the, that, like, each page needs some sort of propulsive elements, mm -hmm. right? Like, so the unit of the page works as a page. Um, how, like, almost how much more detail can you put in, <laughs> I, I, I feel like? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I really wonder if it'll translate. Um, mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it will. Um, I just, I want it to feel like, 
And we, we've talked about this too. Like, I, yeah. I want, wh while you're reading it, I want you to feel like, like you're in good hands, you know? Like whoever, like whoever made it obviously spent the most amount of time out of their lives that they could give to something. Yeah. And therefore, while you're reading it, it's like, okay, well, this is worth, even if you don't, you know, even if there's things that, you know, you don't identify with or whatever, it's like, this is worth at least uh, my attention, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I would say from the pages I've seen from, from Precious Metal, mm -hmm. it's like there's a whole another um, depth to it almost. Mm -hmm. Like it. Yeah. So Thanks. I think it's working. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's Matt, Matt, I'm sure, doesn't like it because <laughs> it's just so much more. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it, it yeah, no, it's, it's, um, a lot more shading, like there's a, there's a depth that. Uh, yeah. How often do you do you talk to Matt? Um, Who's the colorist? If, if yeah. just for the studio audience at home, um. <laughs> uh, every once in a while. I mean, he's pretty amazing. Like we had a conversation yeah. at the beginning of not pretty amazing. He's a genius, but like at he the is. beginning, a little bird. Hmm. Um, I just wrote to him, and Darcy wrote to him, and it's essentially like you know, like we're treating this book. Uh, as something that we can experiment with and try different things that we <coughs> either didn't think we could in other, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, and asked Matt to do the same, and he was like, I love it. And so he basically, um, he colored this in Corel Painter, which is really cool. It's why that has that sort of like, a, it almost looks like, um, it looks like watercolor, and then he's putting like white colored pencil on top mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, which I love, and so he just did that for for this, just to mess around, and, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's what he's doing for Precious Metal too. But it looks fantastic. Uh, yeah, he's, one of these days we've got to have Matt in on a video or something uh, yeah, to talk mm -hmm. to him because he's a the guy's an unsung well not an unsung genius but a genius who he's maybe worked on everything. Everything. Yeah, right. No one ever talks to him. He doesn't. We don't interview colorists and letterers. He's, these are not. He, he we should do he, more of this. He yeah. hand painted the guides for preachers here, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like that's. Yeah. Well, and then and you've, you've seen there? his Facebook post where they're the you know, he he put the thing up and it's got the Y. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, like the handwritten <laughs> color codes of what this color is. It's yeah. the coolest thing. You had a question, Michael. Yeah, uh, Darcy. Um, you had talked a bit about how Little Bird was about some of your fears that the U.S. could become a sort of theocratic fascist nation. On the converse side, did you put in there your hopes for what Canada could become? You know, in this sort of naturalistic, communal type of, of world you created. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was my hopes, but it it, um, it was m more the world that I'm familiar with, I guess. And um, you know, I I think that um, that. Uh, a lot of the the fears that we surround ourselves with every day are very much um, urban driven, you know, or at least like driven by where we have large masses of people. Um, if you go out into, I I like to hike and I spend a lot a lot of time outdoors, and you go to small towns and places like that, and like you know. It's not like they don't have the internet and they they know exactly what's going on, but they're impacted. They're, it's impacted at like a slower, in a different way. You know, they're not um, as tapped into the constant dread that we are That's at all cool. times in in a lot of ways. And um, and and in this case, it was like that's just how I imagine it happening. You know, that if there is a, you know. If there was a theocratic empire taking over North America, it would happen in the cities first, and then it would work it because it would be through government, you know. Um, and and that was one thing I wanted to make clear in Little Bird, which I feel like maybe gets missed, but like um, the Canadian government is totally corrupt too. It's it's um, it's not just America comes in; it's 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 corruption through government because there's the. Um, the Northern Guard, which are those guys with the crosses and the the in the, with the it 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 just gets compressed into this into the Rocky Mountains, where it's just a difficult place for people to go. 
and they sort of start again, you know, um, and they start making their own clothes. They start hunting. They, you know, all these things that by that point would be almost forgotten arts, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it's interesting out. because I'd almost say almost that it's the opposite in America, right? If if if, if the theocracy comes here, I think it's going to come from rural places rather than well i think the that cities, the, right? i think some of the ideas uh come from rural places i don't know that the i don't know that the rampant growth and institutionalization right. that you see here would happen until it hits urban areas yeah. um because as much as is 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 as um Right wing, as a lot of rural places right. are, um, there's still very much like, but that's your fence line and this is mine. Sure. And I'm not going to, you know, that's your business, what you do. You know, it's like, I'm my business, you're your business. They don't tend to, okay. you know, there's a little more like freedom. And, sure. Um, <clears throat> I think, also. I think that corruption, when it hits dense areas, becomes something um, okay. more happens quicker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, to what you were saying, I mean, people who live out in the middle of nowhere don't really need much, right? We rely on not only the people around us, mm -hmm. you know, all, like all the time, even if it's just to not kill us. Right? Sure. Uh, and then all of the Say infrastructure that's still true that we have. people in the city, though. No, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. No, no, no. In, right. in the cities, we, re we rely on that. You're relying on other people more. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. Yeah. Even if it's just... Yeah them not doing awful things to you, right? right? right and right, then right. the more permissible awful things become, they'll affect areas where there's the most people because yeah. it's harder to do that out in the middle of nowhere yeah, with yeah. people. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Hey, Amy? Oh, um, with the sort of part where Little Bird hides in the... Um, in the hole? In the drone thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does she fit in there? And also, how does she breathe? Because Let's if see. you look at the third panel, mm -hmm. um, there's not really any holes, even though there appears to be holes over there. Mm. That's a good point. I, I was kind of thinking that maybe she held her breath. Or, you know, there's like a little air getting in through the through the top of the thing. You know? Maybe. What do you think? Or maybe through the hole. Wait, no. That's pretty cool. Um, maybe both. Back there. Also, how big she fit in there? She's, she's small. But you also know those big robots who have those kind of suit. You like those drone things or were they kind of scary? What did you think? Eh, mm -hmm. A little. But in the um, last <coughs> two pages, mm -hmm. uh, First, she's like still over, mm -hmm. and then oh yes, she's big turns all day. Yes, that's a that's a good uh, yes. Go question. ahead. Uh, I had a question that kind of relates. So, so yeah. one thing that, that we really enjoyed while we're reading it is, is like little. It starts out with the first text like on notebook pages, mm -hmm. ripped up, and then and then the mom's text is like in red outlines. And as it, as the story goes on, Little Bird's text starts to shift to the red outlines. Who, who's was that? The letter or, or, or you guys or? Um, was it in the script? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, we we talked a lot about um, Ian and I talked a lot about it in terms of what's happening on the page. Aditya Bidikar, who's the letter, and I had a lot of conversations about how. We start to, in more subtle ways, you know, bring in the idea of, you know, a lot of the story is about becoming your parents and mm. um, against sometimes your own uh, wishes, you become the person that you don't intend to be. Um, I won't say too much more about it than that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what. Yeah. yeah, the lettering is spectacular in this book. I, yeah. I just have to say, it's, yeah, he's uh, amazing. And he and Addie's like, uh, you know, 
He's the best. He's the best. Yeah, he's he's the best. He's been he's been. Yeah, just I mean and the subtlety several. of it too. It's like I, I I don't know. There's people who are. Yeah, this I really 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 like the lettering. This this seems Eisner worthy lettering lettering to me. He did uh, one I, specific thing in this where there's a, there's a boom sound effect. Yeah, yeah let me find it. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. That was that was pretty. So cool. this was all him, and it was just perfect. So I'd drawn uh, the whole panel, and then he just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, it's so, took I mean, the so panel art and that to the, Yeah, just amazing. And so it becomes <coughs> the panel becomes the lettering. Yeah, yeah. That's that, not you though. That's nope. you. No, that that was a full panel. Yeah. Interesting. That, yeah, that he, he did, did that. Interesting. Part. And and so. But we, it was a very specific story element where that explosion was key to understanding what's going on. Yeah. 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 But we weren't drawing the explosion, so you had to. We had to be looking somewhere else, but knowing that it happened. Um, and so. Yeah. They're coming to you with, I want to change your art to be this. So, I didn't like, even ask. Just did it. Just did it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't the. Well, I think he. Final. I mean, it wasn't asked. No, no, I, you know, I, yeah, but, but I didn't mean it that you, way. What do you guys like, think of this? You need you know, permission, like, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, uh, he's, he's so good. Yeah. 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 We, uh, tons of fun with. Uh, yeah, like I, I consider the lettering to be the final stage of writing. It's not just something that is executing yeah. a certain portion of the writing. Mm -hmm. It actually is writing, and. Um, you know, it, yeah, it, it's... So you're doing another pass with dialogue and things like that? Oh, completely. Once it's lettered, or... Uh, uh, to just try to talk me through the how that works in a lecture. Well, when, when I get the art back, yeah. I do another pass. Yeah. Uh, I, I rewrite the dialogue, okay. which is usually stripping it down. Okay. Because once the art is done, the performance exists, and... Um, I understand that yeah, part, yeah. Yeah, so then I send it to Aditya, and then when he sends it back to me, I'll usually do another uh, pass Interesting. after that. Yeah. Okay, so... Which is a more, like, textured thing, you know. So so you're effectively doing a second lettering pass, theoretically? Yep, yeah. Full book, or just panels of the um, book? Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably the whole book. book. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. no one's complaining about that? Mm, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I like that. People have quit and then right. come back. Uh, no, yeah. uh, I won't. Not me. Let's just say I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, no, Addy, no, I, I don't want to, Addy is just like, no, he, he's, he's the most supportive. He, he, like the rest of us, just wants what's best for the book. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he doesn't care. Yeah. And if he does a revision, I pay him for the revision. It's yeah. not like, you know. So yeah. I, I wasn't trying to no, no, no. suggest anything shady. There. No, no, no. I, just, I, I'm, I didn't I'm think you were. Just I'm just curious being clear about, about how the mechanism works. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like hours yeah. in the day, the, right? The, the, you know? Like for me, and we were talking about this earlier, it's like just there's like a, um, when it comes to the captions and the dialogue, they have to make sense within themselves, sure, within the panel. Yeah. But then I'm also looking for a specific rhythm mm -hmm. through the scene. Or through the chapter, or through mm -hmm. the book, and so when I get it back from him and I read it, if it if it doesn't feel like a song or like a dance yes. as I read through it, then it's like there's something not right, and that's when I yeah, would yeah. send it back and we would work through how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And how is this how is this process di different than editing a film, right? I, I, I keep going uh, back to this metaphor yeah, just because it's, it's not to me. Yeah, it's, it's not. not okay. It's, it's not. not at you don't. All. You don't think of them even related. Yeah, they're they're uh, different. They're different muscles that you're using. No, no, no. It's completely the same. Sorry. Oh, I they mean, are. I okay. mean, they're not different. They're not different. Okay. No, okay. not not to me. Okay. Like logistically, everything is different, but creatively, they're exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. But I logistically, mean, they are. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. They couldn't be more different. Yeah. But like um, the. Uh, the rhythm that I'm talking about looking for in like a scene with the captions or whatever is yeah. exactly the same yeah. rhythm I'd be listening for. Um, I'm with you. In, in, in there. You got a last question, girls? Bye, girls. Are you last question? All right. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming so much. Oh, they'll get out. So.
Yeah. All right. Does anybody else want? Anybody, does anybody have any other questions? Maybe that's. Yeah. You guys want yeah. to you have any more questions on? Because I have some questions. Oh, Charles, please. How did changing your page size impact your schedule? Mm, that's a good question. This is, uh, that's it's really, it's really rough. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, yeah, I'm doing maybe if I'm really, really, uh, if it's going fast, like two pages a week. Um, wow. What were we doing before? Three, two, two, three. That's for precious metal. You're doing two pages a week. Yeah. 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 One and a half, two. Hmm. How viable is that as a economic process? So that's uh, that's all Felix comic art. So okay. he sells my pages. The, so, selling the original art makes it work. Okay. Yeah, he's amazing. Okay. So he, he, so if it, you, for example, if you went all digital, you couldn't make a living. Yeah, I also yeah? don't want to go digital, but yes, absolutely. Right. Yeah. No, okay, I'm, I'm just asking yeah. the question. I mean, he's um, he gets me a bunch of uh, commissions, which mm -hmm. are. Amazing. I mean, they, those were the only reason why I could take on Little Bird, because it was, uh, I mean, Darcy was paying me, and then we got an advance from uh, Glenette, um, but the, pay, the pace of, that I was working was so slow that, uh, yeah, with his, with his commissions, I was able to, to okay. finish it. So I'm hoping that the money that I have lasts me long enough so that uh, we finish Precious Metal without me having to resort to other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're fronting him the money on this? Is that what I'm hearing there? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we have something worked out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, you know, no, no, it's I'm okay. super I, curious I, about I, how page yeah. rates work on a creator-owned book, especially through Image, right? Because they don't pay, I mean, generally, they don't pay an upfront, yeah. you're, you're getting $40 a No, no, I mean, generally this. speaking, the writer is is... Is, paying is the team fundamentally yeah. paying the team, and then the the chunk of you know the, it's an advance essentially that that you'll then get paid back through sales, right. provided you have the sales to pay sure. back. Well, with so Little Bird we did, so that that's was great. but that's my yeah. question. But that is, is not always you the case. didn't walk into this circumstance thinking, oh well, it's a hit for sure. Well, maybe you did because you've got a great partner. Uh, no, I I yeah. I mean I I had you know. Comp Total faith, and I, I knew how great Ian's work was, mm -hmm. but um, you don't know if anyone's going to, you know, buy it sure. or connect with it. I mean, I think the, and I Image warned me, they said, look, like, the first book sales, even if they're really good, it the second issue sales will drop to half because that's the nature of the industry. It has nothing to do with the work you guys are doing or whatever, and then it will usually just keep going down from there. Mm-hmm. Because trades and hard covers that they, they sure. affect the market that yep. way, and it totally makes sense. And um, so, first issue, like, I was like, you can say numbers. It's it was, okay. It was it's like not it was like sixteen thousand issues yep. or something. They it's didn't it's, they didn't know what to do. Sixteen thousand. Yeah, but it sold out in the first day. Right. Right. So then they printed the second print, and then the third print, and yeah. then the fourth print, and it it kept selling out. And so we were like, like five thousand print run. <clears throat> I don't remember region? exactly. Okay. Honestly, I don't. Um, okay. Well, no, they. It was definitely higher than that. And I mean, by okay. the last one, I think it was maybe five thousand okay. or something like that. Um, and then. So how many th copies of the first issue do you think are out there? I don't know. What do you think? Thirty thousand. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, th or more. Kind okay. Of thing. Um, and then, but then. And the your break evens uh, ten ish. What? Is that right? Break even on what? Well, on just out of pocket expenses. And oh, I don't know. And paying I, them and how do you not know? You're supposed to know this. Yeah, no, I don't know. Huh. All right. Um, it, that is complicated math. Sure. Because there was of an course. advance from a French publisher. And, oh, okay. Yeah, all, right, was, all right, all right, all right. But, um, but you know, I lost track. Oh, but, but, but. I'm sorry, then, I, like, I really ask questions like that and I. No, really no, that's okay. I, um, and then, the, but then the second issue sold almost as much. Yeah. And then that's when we knew that we had maybe done something. So you didn't get that fifty percent drop. In no. other words, is what you're saying. And then the, the third the issue, built. third issue sales went up from yep. issue two. That's really rare. Yep. Yep. And 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 so we're like, you have something. Okay, yep. I think people like it. Yep. You know, like that was sort yep. of that was the moment in my mind where I I sort of realized 
liked it, yeah. Yeah. People liked it. Yeah. People do like it, yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, knowing, knowing that you're profitable and knowing, because it's creator-owned work, and you've got to be profitable on your own terms. Uh, and I think that, I, I certainly think that there's any number of, of writers who have gone into bed doing this kind of a book who have ended up losing their shirts mm. at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. Um, but you've got something here that's actually going to work. Um, does that change the way you approach the shape of the future issues? Do you know what I mean? Like, because, because in a lot of cases, you know, maybe I only have five issues to tell the story and that's that versus, oh, well now maybe we've got 20, maybe we've got 50. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't think or it's not? changed anything really. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, for, for Little Bird, we had a very specific story in mind. Yep. And for Precious Metal, we have a very specific story in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, is, is Precious Metal in the same universe? It is, yeah. yeah. It's, um, it's a connecting story. And it takes place 35 years before the events of Little Bird. Okay. Um, and you can read it. If you've never read Little Bird, you can read it on its own. And it, it, you, you'll enjoy it. If you've read Little Bird, there's all kinds of little things in there. Mm -hmm. I get super excited about that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it does make uh, writing more complicated because <laughs> mm -hmm. you're sort of you're writing like a story and a half, you know, like you're you you, you don't and you don't want to cut corners on either one. Um, so it's like you want this story to be you know, completely its own and engaging, but you also want to, like, um, uh, well, that's what I want to yeah. Sure. Yeah. Is this strand of the story going to move forward? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in the end pages, yeah. um, so that the last scene of Little Bird tells you something about precious metal. Okay. There's something from the past in there, and there's also something from the future. So... We are working on the past story, but there is another story that. Um, okay, because the end, you know, the end. I have figuring the who's and the where's and the what's. Yeah. 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 I had to read it twice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to ask a question about that, Raza? Mm, um, well, not specifically. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Precious Metal is going to be book two, or is there going to be a little bird two in Precious Metal? <coughs> uh, Precious Metal is going to be book two. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it is like, still, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's all building to, it, towards more. Or, okay. Yeah, something. And, and how much do you perceive at this moment more to be? Three, there's, five, seven, nine. There's three complete stories that we know we want to tell, Little okay. Bird being the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, it may go beyond that, mm -hmm. or it may not, but we'll yeah, mm -hmm. have to see mm -hmm. from there. I mean, it could be that uh, it takes more than one volume to tell one of those stories. I don't know. We haven't, we haven't sure. discussed that. Um, <laughs> don't, don't <laughs> but, uh, yeah. You had? Yeah, I just want to make sure they were done. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I want to get back to something you you said at the at the beginning uh, of of the interview, which I thought was really interesting about um, sort of what inspired, at least in part, the story and your interviews with First Nations people. Um, I mean, we're often taught and told write what you know, uh, and I'm curious to hear a little bit more about your process in deciding that you wanted to include at least the spirit of those experiences that you had, if not something more, uh, and yet make it accessible and uh, <coughs> exciting in the story you know, that became Little Bird. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't... Um, I, I think I was just inspired by... by what I'd learned, I wasn't, I had no intention of like telling that story mm -hmm. or trying to tell that story on, on their behalf. It's, that's not really my place, but, 
Yeah, because um, these are kind of white people too, right? Uh, well, there's a lot of white people in it, yeah. 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 Um, and, you know, she's mixed ethnicity. She's right. not all one thing or another. But um, the thing when with... Um, we talked a lot about this, but like it, it became when we in the world we live in or when I see um, people protesting on behalf of the environment, um, I, certainly in Canada and, and here too, it's like it's almost always women on the front of that and it's almost always uh, indigenous women on the front of that. Um, so when it comes to pipelines and um, just, you know, and so it just became, to me it felt disingenuous to write anyone else in that role. Um, I was hesitant because um, I'm also a middle-aged white man and I don't want to be, you know, like, um, I don't want to be telling well, like I said, I don't want to be telling stories on other people's behalf, but at the same time, it was like, it just feels disingenuous to have, you know, sure. yeah. So that was, at least in, it, it, like in BC where I live, it's, it's the, it, that's who's leading the charge on stuff like that. And um, so, yeah, write what you know. And that's kind of, yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. That yeah, was I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I always find the, the, the <clears throat> process of converting personal experience to entertaining story without turning it into a therapy session right. to be um, the ones that I respond best to. Mm. Um, I, I think it's fine to work out your problems in a book if that's the therapy you need, but that doesn't always make for interesting storytelling. Right. Yeah, I, I write what you know. I that you know I've that's been thrown around a lot, and I think it's taken out of context. Like, totally. yeah. it's not they're not saying if you're a lawyer you should just write stories about lawyers. Like, it's just. Um, but I think maybe like write it in a way that you know mm -hmm. is maybe more the intent, mm -hmm. the original intent, which is like. You're not you know don't. If you're not Shakespeare, don't sit down and write Shakespeare, like t use your own voice, you know, to tell the story you want to tell. Um, One of the things I'd like to talk about about the book a little bit, and I actually kind of wish the kids were still here for this one, is the <laughs> book is incredibly fucking violent. I mean, it's it's really, it's and, but it's, it's also violent in a way that's kind of sexy violent. I don't know. Uh, I, it, it, I, but this is, I mean, he's sexy. And he's violent. Sure, yeah. Um, every issue has at least one action piece that is centered around the violence and the spectacle of violence, yeah. I, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, so it's intentionally ridiculously over the top. Yeah. I mean, so Little Bird, I mean, she's driven by uh, revenge and all the things that she was told she should do. Mm -hmm. right? And so in so many revenge tales, you know, by the end, you know, a lot of them either realize that, you know, the violence wasn't worth, you know, ruining their lives to get petty revenge or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so with this stuff, I wanted to, you know, in some, in comics, you know, we, we, and I remember reading Invincible and, you know, being like, I mean, this is the most violent thing I'd ever read at the time in, in, in comics, you know, sure. it's not Blood Meridian, but, um, <laughs> uh, the I'd idea. hard boiled yet then. Obviously. Yeah. No, I had actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, th I somehow thought. Really? Oh, I guess maybe it is yeah, actually. I mean, maybe. Just like the yeah, blood, specifically yeah. the blood. Well, especially because it's yeah. supposed to be a superhero comic yeah, on the yeah, face, yeah, right? And yeah. so yeah. that's what makes it kind of over the top in the violence. Yeah. yeah. So, so the the the, the absurdity of yeah. of the violence. Yeah. Uh, just highlights the like, the the, the impotence of trying to solve matters through. Violence. Okay. Um, was hopefully came across. I mean, I'm not sure if it did. What do you think? Yeah. 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 Sure. But I think you revel in it in a couple places. Maybe not revel in it, but 
I don't know. I, I, I think of the oh. scene, particularly the, uh, I guess, the tree cutting scene, I guess I'd call that one. Oh, we cut some in half. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and um, <clears throat> there's yeah. something, it's it's sexy and it's powerful and it's <laughs> it's also nasty as fuck. And it's... I don't know if it's sexy. Yeah, but I agree with all of them. Yeah. Well, no, but sexy. I mean, but look, the reaction of the character who, who cut the trees yeah. is... Holy shit! Look at what I fucking did. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm the boss, and Wait, I, I feel like which which um, the, the, the 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 clear cut, the umbrella cut, or umbrella bomb, or whatever I called it. Uh, I don't know what you call it in the book. The the rebels are about to oh, yeah, yeah. take when, out when they the, clear cut these guys, yeah. and then oh, no, and not, they're cut off at the not, yeah. He's not like happy about that. No, one guy is. One guy is. Yeah, and one then, guy for sure is in the story. Yeah. And then one guy is just like you know. Yeah. Can I see? The clear cut. This this this. That, that's the last page. <clears throat> like, there's this guy, but then there's that dude. Yeah. You get the speech. Yeah. Wait, so so, are you asking if I think that this is sexy? No, 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 no. I'm saying I feel there's a sexiness in it that is through the... It's, it's exciting, and it's... Oh, it's yeah. sudden, and it... And, and, I, I don't know. They're, that's yeah. a sexy thing, is it not? Am I no, wrong no, no, no. on that? Okay. Sex and death. Yeah. Sure. And, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you see something horrible, and then it's like. Yeah. Yeah. And it's horrible. I mean, it's really horrible. I mean, yeah. that was. Yeah. That. But it's also like it's also these people coming to realize like, you know, they're they're they're. I mean, these these are not <coughs> these are not like evil men and women. You know. I wasn't and, saying and, they were. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, they're just given this this weapon that's you know that they aren't really sure mm -hmm. what you know. I mean, they they have the idea of what it's going to do, and mm -hmm. then to just see, I mean, it's like it's like modern warfare. I mean, it's just these horrific things, and you know, you're just you're given a drone and you fly to you know. Sure. Mm -hmm. The violence versus the removal of that person from. The actual aspect of committing it. Sure. Right. Yeah, I just I, there's a lot of stuff in here that is over the top in that way. Whether it's that scene, whether it's little bird doing the flip and putting two daggers in someone's eyes. I mean, there's there's like every issue. I think, I think we think, we mm. like we made a commitment that when we were gonna do violence, mm -hmm. we were gonna really fucking do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not mess around, you know and to me, those are it's funny. emotional punctuations. You know, like it, it's they always sort of happen in a rhythm of um, it. You come out of something to that. You know that there's there's like an unexpected violence is like so unexpected, mm. like in life. Mm -hmm. And so in I think life, for sure, yeah. yeah. You know, like you're walking down the street and it's like you're talking to your friend. When then now the guy gets a ball across. The, what the mm -hmm. fuck? Just you know, it's mm -hmm. always. You know, it, like, I don't know. Like, in movies, it's just like violence is just like a, you know, or whatever. It's like a theme. It's just like an ongoing whatever. But, like, in life, it just, it's just all oh, it happens so mm -hmm. suddenly. And I think that's what, I mean, for me, that's what, that's what we were attempting to do. And then to just, like, make it that much more horrific Yeah. when we could and not turn the camera the other way. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it always came, I think, unexpectedly. Okay. You know, that was, that, that, that's how violence, that's my main you know, thing. Okay. I don't know, saying that. Okay. I, it, it, so I guess my question, if, if I actually had a question. Do you have I, a question? Because, you know, sometimes I just babble. Um, the, but it, it feels to me like, like each issue has at least one set piece where violence is the, not the, not the reason for it, but the, the drive of that scene. Is that, does that seem fair? As a, that's not a criticism. No, that's no like, I think like it's once, a commentary. I think I, like know. once, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's about war and I think once in a book, like, I, to be honest, this, it, it, the other thing is like, um, I don't, uh, I'm not big on writing action. Mm. I don't, uh, I tend to, it's like the one thing I tend to like not do. I actually would not have guessed that from, yeah, I know. from, from this work. No, I, 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 and that's I, not a yeah, yeah. criticism in any way. No, it's, no. Uh, 
I, it, you seem like you're very comfortable with it. No, I... I um, In terms of choreography, uh, it, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, Ian... He choreographs all that. But, like, the... But Ian has, like... Uh, you've had to remind me at times, like, we probably should, you know, whatever. Like, uh... Because I could do like coffee dates. I could okay. just write like coffee dates all like, all day long, <laughs> but on the backdrop of like dystopian war and all that shit. And we went back and forth about um, uh, that scene with um, Little Bird getting stomped out at the end. At the end, yeah. Because Darcy had written it, and I was like, "This is super fucking violent. I don't mm -hmm. know how I feel about mm -hmm. this. You know, like this is you know yep. uh, like a a girl. You know, this is really brutal." And then we talked about it, and then. He was like, okay, well, let's, you know, we'll think about it. And then I, th I thought about it. And I forget exactly when it changed, but I was like, ah, we got we to gotta do it this way. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about it, but it's mm -hmm. the, the idea of, you know, a, you know, she commits wanton violence. And at a certain point, it catches <clears> up. <throat> um, sure, well, yeah. so does the axe. So so does, I don't remember the mom's name off the top of my head. Tattoo. Uh, tattoo, I, yeah. yeah. Tantu. Tantu, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I yeah, mean, so it's, yeah. so it's like we. Uh, I tend to at least not. I'm inclined to not write long action sequences, mm -hmm. but when one happens, it's usually immediate and violent. Yeah, and then kind of over. Okay. Um, uh, and also just like I like seeing Ian draw those things. Yeah. You know, like well, some like a dude like, cut in half. Yeah, I, I, like, yeah. Yeah, like. That's a really exciting thing to write when you know that Ian's going to draw. Right. Like, right. Like, you see the anatomy on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's pretty compelling stuff. I mean, that's all this. I, I love drawing viscera and, and yeah. all that. Yeah. And tentacles. And tentacles. You love yeah. Tentacles. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, they're 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 like the through line between all the House of, House of Penance, this, my sketchbooks, yeah. my paintings. Yeah. It's like this. Like undercurrent, you know, I th I've mentioned this before, maybe in the last, you know, yeah. but like, you know, this sort of like um, this connective tissue uh, that is the subconscious of all of the all of the characters in, yeah. the, in, in the works. <coughs> yeah. What about so? What's the visual? Uh, I mean, the little bird character visually is very unique and interesting. I was wondering what the what the influences were there, and what you looked at to come up. Oh, uh, definitely yeah. Princess Mononoke. Yeah, I mean. Just okay. it's it's one of my favorite films. And it's, it's it's almost a straight up homage to to her. Yeah. So it's interesting yeah. that there's a there's a heaviness to Little Bird that there isn't in Miyazaki. Like Little Bird feels like on solid. the on, solid and on the ground. Yeah. You yeah. know. When I think yeah. of Miyazaki, yeah. I think of flight. That's what I yeah. think of. Yeah, like a lot of light touches. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think I intentionally made her solid like yeah. that. Maybe it's just the way I draw. I yeah. know, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, you're right. There is like a weight to it. Yeah, there's a weight to it. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that yeah. before. But I remember the first time we discussed the character design, where I um, had the goggles and the beak in mind, and you, I don't, you didn't like it. You didn't like the idea. Or at least... Um, yeah, you you, you, you you didn't like it because I think it the way I described it was very cartoony. Like she's got goggles and like a beak beak mask, and then you went away, and then you called me up and you were like, "Oh no, I got it," and then you sent it to me. But and and the the um, I don't know. Yeah. six years ago. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was, <clears throat> but that was. You know, it, and the like, the feathers and the hair and stuff like all all that was stuff. I was just like, oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah, she's she's fun to draw. Yeah, I have a, we have a new character in this in this next book that I was joking with Darcy. He's just made up of these like tiny, almost like individual cells, uh, just covered in. I mean, he's he's just a mass of <coughs> the most hyper detailed. Oh, I showed I showed you some yeah. of it. Yeah, it's gonna be such a. It's gonna be so bad to draw. <laughs> yeah, 
Last thing, like it was cool for chapter one, then chapter two, I'm like writing all these things. I'm going. I feel bad. Do you? Do you? I do. It's like, oh, here he is again. Now he's doing this. Yeah, because someone's got to execute. It's like all those little. Oh my god. Yeah. 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 How do you? How do you do it though, Ian? I mean, how do you? How do you not break? I I I don't get it. I mean, I I really don't get it because I could never do that kind of intricate detail where you're summoning blackness out of individual lines, you know? Uh, I mean, if I'm honest, I mean, it's the only thing I'm good at. Okay. Um, and then also, I mean, I, I just, it's not like I'm living like a great life, mm. you know? It, <laughs> I guess the best way to put it is, it, it is, it is it's, it's obsessive and it's a lot of time spent yeah. at a drawing table. Um, and you don't usually do that unless there's uh, something missing that you're trying to find through obsession of one kind or another. So, Do you think you're finding it? I don't know. I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. If I find peace, I will. All right. I'll let you know. <laughs> Are you not at peace? Are you? I'm... I'm <laughs> relatively at peace, relatively. But I'm, but I'm 52, and I've tried to build my life to get myself to that. Yeah. And all of the things that make me not at peace have nothing to do with me. They have to do with what other people are doing. My strife is all like Marvel and DC fucking suck. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm just speaking as a comic book retailer, right? Uh, yeah. My peace is not not lack of internal like I don't know I mean people are different no they are different, I, uh, yeah I, I, I like I like that that sounds yeah. like a good life yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to bullet it that way you had a question yeah um, when you started talking about your idea for Lover you talked about thinking originally it might be a film and now we've talked about how much success the book has had and like the cinematic violence in it which would seem to <laughs> translate really well right. have you thought about going that direction again and if you do go that direction would it be possible as a director and editor to let somebody else do that? Or would you have to be the one to do it? Well, I don't feel like I'd need to be the one to do it. Um, we've had lots of interest. Nothing has happened yet. But we, but there's interest out there in making it a film. I think that um, it's... I think... People get really. Uh, we've had some studio stuff get really excited, but it's it is a little bit weird. Like it's maybe just a little bit weird for I think it's for also, people to. I think it's also the, the 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 specific evil, or yeah, initial specific evil uh, is mm -hmm. the Christian Church. I mean, yeah. no one's going to touch that. Yeah, that's been a big. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could have made it. It's like, been a stumbling Star Wars, you know, like. It's a bunch of people dressed in black, and they're bad. But that was the, the yeah, exactly. That, no, that, not that there's anything wrong with. It. No, no, no. But that was that was the intention, right? It's like what what. Here's a story that you know. I I think you you the you tell stories that you don't think other people will tell. That's the point, and so that was. I definitely felt like, the goal for us is to make something that hasn't been made, or to make something that someone else won't make. And um, so that, but then that also becomes true of remaking, you know, um, we've done our version. Um, I'd be fine with it being on screen. Um, but I don't know who's going to do that. Do you keep that as a hard, uh, no budge line that like that would have to be the, the villain in, in the cinematic version as well? Like, cause I can see what I'm trying to spin that, like, you look at who's got all the money, the Disney side, who's got yeah. all the money. Oh, our rated our, our rated our comic book movies. Okay, and okay, yeah, you just spin it with this being the bad guy instead of that, and like. I don't know that we would be hardlined about it, but I don't think it would work otherwise. I think that is the story, and so. I, I'd be pretty. Yeah, it. it's it's just like if you're gonna change that, then just there's lots of dystopians out there. Go find them, you know. Um, mm. So. Uh, things need to change when it goes to screen. It, they're two different mediums. Things don't work the same. But I feel like if 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 Little Bird wasn't who she is, 
like if they tried to like whitewash the protagonists and if they tried to swap the church out for aliens from Mars it's just like well then you know I think those are two things that are tough to uh, do and keep the story intact you know because it ties into so much of the other little threads reincarnation and all that that they just kind of then they're there without purpose and uh, yeah, I also have to say, I mean, I, I and then we talked about this a little bit earlier, that I, one of the things I like the most about this book is it strikes me as essentially unfilmable. Like, it, as this, the, you, could, you couldn't make, it. this could only be in comics, and that's part can of the ask, strength can, of it. Can I ask, what, what, like, what parts? Or what... Uh... <sighs> Just, uh, so, the, the kineticness of each page, um... I don't think would translate into a into a narrative that is not comics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, the, the uh, like like a director like Michael Bay will try to put lots of cuts and angles and turning the camera in weird ways and and it kind of works, but it this is a thing that works as a comic, I think, very specifically because of the language of comics. And the pacing of a comic page, and and the <laughs> counter narrative, and how and how uh, 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 dialogue is working to enforce yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, the the visual language, and how the visual language is working to enforce the dialogue. Right. It's it's the reason that that though they made a frame by frame essentially remake of Watchmen, it didn't work at all because it 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 wasn't the medium that that was intended to be. Yeah, no, yeah. maybe. I mean, I think especially with the uh, with the dialogue. Like sure. That's 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 like her captions. Yep. yep. Spoken dialogue. Yep. And then the panels and how it how it trans. Yeah, I I, I, I don't think it could work as a con. It, it you could very, make a movie of different. this. Yeah. You could make a movie of this, but. That's a thing I admire about comics when they actually embrace their comicness rather than you know so much of the the periodicals that we get are like storyboards storyboards right this is not a storyboard this is its own thing you couldn't if someone, someone tried to make this using this as a storyboard i don't think it would work do you i don't know it's interesting as the artist like it, it this is what's in I, your I, eye I, your I, mind's eye right i think weirdly i would love to see someone Try it, try it. Yeah. yeah, it'd be fun yeah. to see them try. Yeah, yeah. I don't know like that they would really want to yeah. right. this into right. like in animation. Yeah. It could get much in animation, like, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah, live action would be very yeah. challenging, very difficult. I, like. I think. Yeah. yeah, especially the dream. Like there's the, yeah. the, the dream world and how that interacts with the characters yeah. and um, yeah, be, yeah. 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 Okay. Do we have any more questions? Any kind of last questions? Because we've been talking a really long time. I could actually really keep going, but yeah, we, we're almost at two hours here. <laughs> we should probably probably should. let everyone go. <laughs> I just love talking about comics, and I love talking about how they're different than other media, you know. And um, this feels to me like a distillation of what comics are in a lot of ways. Thank you, man. That means a lot. Yeah. Um, I want to ask one more kind of processy question. And it's the physicality of this book as an object. Mm. Can we talk about your thinking and your your art direction and and an image <laughs> and and like did they they're like do whatever you want or because it it has a hand and it feels good in your hand <laughs> and it it's yeah. well designed. Mm -hmm. Is that you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Images kind of like do what do what you want, mm -hmm. um, and because um, it seems yeah. to me you spent a couple extra bucks yeah. for a couple extra things here for the book. Yeah, yeah. I just you know what I, I I'm going to be totally honest. Um, I you know I, I I'm just like kind of an obsessive person, and um, I just get. I just details are everything to me, yeah. you know. Like so, um, 
it's pretty obvious from the work. Yeah. So it, it's just like I, you know, it's like we just wanted to, you know, we put a lot of care and effort mm -hmm. into into putting this together. Mm -hmm. I also, I'm like, I, I comics are fucking expensive, man. Yeah. Like I say that as someone who buys comics, they are so fucking expensive. Yeah. And um, and this, I guess I kind of carry this like uh, guilt with me about that. I don't. It's not. I, I. There's no reason for me to feel guilty, but I. It's the reason that like every single issue of Little Bird was like forty pages, and it was only three ninety nine. It's because I just feel like. Uh, like I've bought. And I've been like, oh, this looks cool. I pick it up. It's three ninety nine. Like twenty two pages later, it's you know plus. And an you ad, didn't even get it. It's as, over. You didn't even and get an like, idea. Yeah. Fuck. That's like. Yeah. yeah. God. Damn, that's like yep. seven dollars Canadian. Yep. Jesus. Yep. Um, and so I think I'm driven like everything, all my rest. And so I just wanted it to be awesome. So, yeah. So and uh, and then Ben Didier, who's the designer, is like just an incredible artist and a friend we've been working together for years he's always designed my film posters and stuff like that so it was nice because we had like a shorthand and um yeah like look at these end papers man yeah, yeah the, the so end papers cool. are beautiful it's all the chapter logos all yeah. weaved together yeah yeah so we just you know you spent a lot of time thinking about it we uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 thank you though it because, sure I, is. Yeah. because like it's i'm a thing nerd you yeah know? like i like things sure be cool. sure well i mean i try to yeah. with this club that you know that no, it, 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 it's yeah, uh, this is a thirty thirty dollar book, and yeah. we charge twenty five at the most for oh, the club. That's amazing. You know, so yeah. I'm taking a five dollar copy loss yeah, on yeah. this one this month. Yeah, yeah. But because it's a it's a real fucking object that yeah. is awesome. This is awesome. Like I, I I love like Criterion. Yeah. DVDs and yep. Blu-rays because they got the books and yep. just like so much care goes yep. into making that shit. Yep. I just love it so much. Yeah. Um, I hate digital. I hate digital comics. I can't. I won't. All that digital shit. I. I, need I can't to, even read them. I, I don't. I need. Maybe yeah. it's just because we're old. But like, I need yeah. to like no. hold it and have it and love it. No, the page is a thing. <laughs> the physical boundaries of a physical page is an actual fucking thing. It's a thing. It's more than that. It's yeah. the smell. It's the. Yeah. yeah all that stuff, oh, right? You, it, you're interacting with all your senses. Yep. It's not yep. just. Uh, yep. A hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yep. All right, well, yeah. that seems like a pretty okay place to end this, I think. Thank you, guys. Thank you, uh, thank thank you, you for this book. It, 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 seriously, if, if you are out there watching this at home, I, I think this is one of the best books of the year. You know, um, this is, it's a piece of craft and love, and it's smart, and it has a thing that it's trying to tell you. And it's beautiful, and it has p p p p p p p on a page. Because that's the page I open to. I just I love this book in every way, and I and I want you to buy it. So go and buy it. Uh, next month's book is <laughs> it's a totally different book. Wonder Twins. <laughs> Woo! Wonder Twins powers activate uh, by Mark Russell and uh, Stephen Byrne. Um, this is not, it's not a completely different book, and we're going to talk to, uh, um, Mark Russell's going to be here in person, uh, on January 19th, and I think that's going to be a really, I think we're going to have a good time with that conversation, because that guy seems like he's going to tell me a lot of good jokes, that's what it seems like. Uh, but our book this month was Little Bird, um, uh, Darcy Van Polgeest. Yeah, thank you. Ian Bertram, for the second time, because he's so fucking awesome, it's the second time, and uh, and we cannot wait for precious metals, and and the third part past that. We want more, so we love it. Thanks. Very much.